There is no denying that United on the pitch right now are absolutely horrendous and there's no justifying the results that we are seeing from United. And I said before December started that this was a big month ahead for Solskjaer. The opportunity for him to really establish his identity on the team and to show that he can get this United team playing how he wants them to be every single week. And instead, December started with a 2 all draw against newly promoted Aston Villa at Old Trafford. And yet more calls came after the game for Solskjaer to be sacked and replaced by Pochettino. And with Spurs coming to Old Trafford and United going to City within the space of four days following that Villa game, well, seven days, but those two games together are four days. It's a massive, massive moment for Solskjaer and for United. So what is next? And what I want to do in this video is, I don't want to just give my opinion. I asked you on Twitter and on the YouTube community page to give me your opinions on this. So what I'm going to do is run through all of those and then give my opinion towards the end. Because you can't just stick your head in the sand now. You have to discuss it. And that's the crossroads I think that United find themselves at with Solskjaer and United. So let's get straight to it. I asked you on Twitter what you felt was next for United and Solskjaer, whether that would be Oli keeping his job or Oli being replaced. What do you think is actually going to happen next for United? And these were your responses. First one here, Van der Josti saying, Oli in if Twitter existed in the first three years of Fergie, it would have been Fergie out. Two points here. Yeah, it absolutely would have been. Second of all, the comparisons between Solskjaer and any other previous United manager need to stop other than Mourinho, which is the only relevant one now. Because there's no point comparing the first three years of Fergie to Oli. They're completely different decades, different teams, different context, everything. It's pointless comparing, especially with Moyes. He took over champions and turned them into a shit team. Solskjaer picked up a shit team, which is still a shit team. So the comparisons to any other manager that United have had need to stop with Solskjaer. One here from Matthew Wiggins saying, anyone would probably think we're in a mid-table league position because we have a mid-table league squad. I don't see what any other manager could do with it. We need some better players and we'll win more games. I don't think it's rocket science. Now, I agree with you in the idea that this is a mid-table team. And that's why the expectations are so different from the reality of United fans who we've all grown up chasing league titles in the last 20 years and instead now seventh has become more of the new norm than first and managing that expectation with the reality is difficult would someone else get more out of these players maybe but that's the grass is greener sort of argument it is a rocket science that we need better players we have got an average squad but it's also not rocket science to say that Solskjaer doesn't seem to be getting the most out of his players. Certainly not every week. And it's the inconsistencies which fuck me off the most. One week, we're excellent. Another week, we're horrendous. And maybe that's down to the fact that we have got such a young team that you can't really expect a team for the youngsters to be consistent. That's what quality and class, that's what they will bring you. So it's just, it's, it's hard to say that one. One here from Ben saying, the way the transfers have been drip fed over the past decade, it's only fair to allow Ole at least two more windows before demanding to see improvement. He knows the players are not good enough, but he's not going to sacrifice the development of youth for short-term gain. Transfers has been drip-fed at United. Clearly in the summer, we needed a central midfielder and we needed somebody to come in to replace the outgoing Lukaku and Sanchez. Had both of those happened, I don't think we'd be having the same conversation. It's the small margins, but it's not really that small a margin. For United, it, it would be quite small, relative, to spend a bit more on a fucking central midfielder. Instead, we're left with Andreas Pereira playing in central midfield every damn week. It's painfully obvious he's not good enough to be a United player anymore. And as soon as you take Scott McTominay out of the team, the midfield absolutely disappears. Nobody could have predicted that Pogba was going to miss three months with injury. Nobody could have predicted that Martial was going to miss three months with injury. And sure, the injuries have made it more difficult. But whether or not it's, it's fair to say that Solskjaer needs two more windows before demanding to see improvement, that's a lot of patience. 
It's been nearly two years that Solskjaer has been manager and you all know that I have backed him and I will continue to back him. But when you're seeing these sorts of performances with just zero identity up against newly promoted teams, conceding five against Sheffield United and Villa, Solskjaer's job at the moment at United is not just to win the games. That's why it's such a difficult job for him because he's doing so much behind the scenes and that's why I've always supported him and will do. But at some point, the results have to be a measure of where Solskjaer is as well. And I just don't think we can continue ignoring it. And it's that point, that's why I said December was so crucial because it was a chance for him to finally properly establish these continued results. And maybe it was unfair of me to say that with a given injuries that we got at the moment. But it's getting worse. At the moment, it's definitely getting worse. And will the return of McTominay and Pogba all of a sudden change that? I hope so. Maybe that is the problem. Maybe it's solely down to the quality of the players. But the questions are being asked now as to whether that's not just the issue and whether Solskjaer is part of it. Shoaib saying that Ole's been set up to fail. It's heartbreaking. But the structures have all failed the club. Ole is a scapegoat. What's saying the exact same structures won't fail Pochettino? And that's another big concern of mine is everyone's saying, ah, fuck Ole, get rid of him, X, Y, Z. When we've seen people say that after Moyes, Van Gaal came in, suffered the same fate. When Van Gaal went, Mourinho came in, he suffered the same fate. When Mourinho came in and Solskjaer's here now, he's suffering the same fate. What's to say that that's all going to completely change under Pochettino? Now, he might have a track record of working with a stingy chairman who doesn't want to spend and has a great record of improving the squad and the youth that he has at his disposal. But there's no guarantees that Poch would come in and just be the magic sponge that United need. Absolutely no guarantees whatsoever. It's just where you, it's where you put your money. It's like United are just, if you look at it as a, as a horse race, you've got Ollie on one hand, you've got Poch on the other hand. I don't know where I'm going with this analogy. Nowhere. And that's kind of what it feels like United are doing at the moment. As you can tell, I'm starting to get concerned, massively concerned. I've, I've always sort of semi-overlooked the results because I knew that the good work that Solskjaer was doing behind the scenes was the most important thing and still remains the most important thing. And I absolutely stand by the fact that if Solskjaer does leave the club or he will leave the club at some point, it will be in a much better condition than when he got the club. But these continued results, resting the whole team against Astana, wouldn't have mattered had we beaten Villa. But instead, you've rested the whole team for a week and come back. And they still doing that? It's not down to fitness then, is it? What is it that's forcing United to play like that? Is it just down to the quality of the players? I hope it is. But if that is the case, then Pochettino will suffer the same fate. Next one here from United, Sean saying, if he stays, he won't be able to sign any decent players in the summer. No intelligent player is going to waste years of their career under Ole. If he's sacked, Poch may have some pulling power. I think that's unfair. But again, that's maybe me just looking at it from a positive angle. I don't think... I don't think it matters too much who is our manager in terms of the players that will come in. Now again, maybe I'm wrong with that. Maybe Poch does have that bigger pulling power. Maybe pull Harry Kane with him if he wants, but that's never going to happen. At United, it's just down to the fact that the club won't spend the money. And everyone's going to say, yeah, you spent 80 on Harry Maguire and you spent 50 on Wan-Bissaka, and we did. But we also got rid of Fellaini and Herrera and Lukaku and Sanchez and Smalling and Darmian. And it balanced itself out. Whereas we could have spent more on the central midfielder we desperately needed, on the striker replacement we clearly needed. And instead, as has been mentioned there, Solskjaer's a bit of a, a scapegoat, a bit of a fool guy. Because he's taken the brunt of it. Another here from RRM saying the way he's talking about it almost feels like he has no set targets. He has to meet and there's no pressure from upstairs either. I don't see any changes until the summer. Now... I think you might be right there because, you know, from the Athletic this morning, Daniel Taylor, all the murmurings from United is that Solskjaer is safe. His job is not under pressure and he's going absolutely nowhere. 
And Solskjaer saying that the league positions don't matter. It's almost as if he has been told that the league position doesn't matter. And that your main job right now is to properly rebuild this club. Brick by brick. Slowly. But surely. And that that's his priority. And as far as the club is concerned, behind the scenes, he's not failing with that. If his job was to win football games, was to win trophies and bring success back to United, he would be catastrophically failing in his position right now. And that's why it's always been such a, a divisive area with Solskjaer. Because on the one hand, you, you know that every decision he's making is in the interest of the club. He loves United. He's United through and through. He's not going to make any egotistical decisions like Mourinho would to try and bring in short-term success. So he was the manager who had success. That doesn't really matter to Solskjaer. And for a lot of people, the fact it doesn't matter to Solskjaer is the problem. But it's the, it's the concept of, of where the expectations and the reality are for United at the moment because we are a crap football club. We have been for a long time. And maybe this time of pain under Solskjaer is what's needed to really gut the club and to come back up from the bottom. I don't know. I really, really don't know anymore. And that's what's making it really hard to continue having these conversations, I suppose, because I don't want to be considered someone who flip-flops in between opinions and I would always stand behind Solskjaer. But right now, what I'm seeing with these performances, so much of it is starting to become unjustifiable. And we've got Spurs and City next. I think we're going to get pumped in both of those games. For a few more comments here from YouTube. Uh, Man U saying... Give Oli better players, our team is crap. Talks about bringing in Pochettino, what's the difference going to make? Jose couldn't do it. It's the players, they are crap. End of story. The squad is clearly mid-table. Fred, backup midfielder. We should have two better midfielders in front of him. Pereira, not good enough to play for United at all. Rashford's been probably one of our best players this season. He's really come through a good run of form. But Rashford and Martial are, as our only strikers, not good enough. Dan James as our only real winger, not good enough. Juan Mata, not good enough anymore. Phil Jones, get out of my club. Luke Shaw, not good enough. Ashley Young, not good enough. De Gea, good enough. Maguire, good enough. Lindelof, question marks, I think, asked about Lindelof now fairly. No matter where you look, United squad definitely is not good enough. Nobody is going to argue that it is. But I think it's disingenuous to just put everything on a crap squad or everything on a bad manager or everything on how poorly a club is run. It's a culmination of everything and that's what makes it so difficult for United. Is the problem just doesn't exist in one area. There's tons of things that have to be sorted. Got Akshay saying, can't really justify Ole in by saying he inherited a crap team is what you're saying there. Talked about his tactics and not being good enough. Better if Ole leaves right now. If he leaves the club as a legend. I don't think... Well, in my opinion, I don't think the managerial success or failure of Solskjaer would affect how he's considered as a legend of the club. Because he really is. He's been my favourite player. Always will be. But maybe I'm wrong again. I, I, don't, I don't know where to think or where to look at the moment. Just United are just confusing me left, right and centre. Just progress one week, two steps back the next week. Is all of the problem? Is it the players? I don't know where to look. I know where to point the finger. And that's at the Glazers and that is at Ed Woodward, who are the root of all of these problems. But we're not going to fucking get rid of them. So what point is me pointing? That didn't even make sense. I don't know, a lot of what I'm saying is not making sense now. I'm just rambling on. I've uh, got another comment here saying, I read a lot of comments saying he has inherited a weak squad. I'm starting to doubt whether he's got the tactical knowledge. I think that's one thing you can definitely say about Solskjaer. Is he's, he's really showing himself up tactically. And the thing that confuses me about Solskjaer there is if you rewind to Wembley last year when we played Spurs under Poch and we won 1-0 with a completely new... Tactic system. Caught him out by surprise. Nobody knew we were going to do it. Executed perfectly. Where's that gone? 
Where's that Ole gone? The guy who isn't just sticking to four through two, three, one, or sticking to three, five, two. Confusing. Even bring in Lingard on for Mata in the 73rd minute against Villa. Should have been the 65th minute and it should have been Greenwood. But again, maybe that's down to opinion. Soccerhead Screw saying, I'll give him to the end of the season to see how United have finished. Talks about United's poor midfield. Talks about mismanagement. Poor decisions since Fergie. Our midfield is truly horrendous and the club really did screw him by not bringing in reinforcements this summer. And I refuse to believe that Solskjaer was going, yeah, I'm happy, just, yeah, I'll bring through Scott McTominay. Andres Pereira, you can start in central midfield as well. Fred, yeah, 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 yeah I trust you, Fred. I don't think he did that. I think he would have asked for midfielders and the club did not give them to him. But Solskjaer being the man that he is, he's not going to come out in the public like Mourinho did and question it and argue it. He's, tr he's kept it behind the scenes. Whether that's right or wrong, again, down to opinion. Future here saying Oli isn't the problem at all. Talks about the shit squad. Another comment like that. ENT reinforcements in midfield needed in January. Look, I don't know where you all stand on Solskjaer, on United, and what should be happening next. But my opinion on it all, you know me. And the fact that I've backed Solskjaer and... I can see what he's trying to do behind the scenes at the club. It was a rebuild process with somebody in charge who actually gave a fuck about rebuilding the club properly from the ground up. And I think every decision that Solskjaer is making has been made with the club's interest in mind. And I absolutely stand by the fact that he will leave United in a better condition than when he found it, when he took over from Jose Mourinho. So that whoever follows him will have better conditions for success. And I don't think that Solskjaer is the manager to bring that success back. But this midfield is horrendous. It's been years and years and years in the making. And it's just somehow getting worse. Doesn't matter who. Spend 50 odd million on Fred. Christ, man. He's, that was at the same time where we could have got Fabinho as well. But we chose Fred. Just decisions. Horrendous. Everywhere. And Solskjaer has suffered because of that. But at the same time, the football is so horrendous at the moment that I don't think Solskjaer can just get away from this scot-free, that you can just say, give him time, X, Y, Z. Solskjaer has to improve the football. The consistency has to come. That's what I said was needed in December and we couldn't have been further away from it against Villa. Even went 2-1 up and then conceded another minute and a half later. That's just amateur. Just poor. And we've got Spurs coming up, we've got City coming up. Maybe United will surprise us all, like we did against Liverpool, and pull out a performance. But at the same time, that would semi-piss me off as well, is if you could do that against Spurs, but you're drawing against Villa. What are you doing? The players should be up for every game, and it's you as a manager needing to get more out of these players. But there's no denying that this squad is not good enough at all for getting United back up to where we want to be. And investment is still needed. The question here is whether you think that Solskjaer is the man who should be tasked with continuing that process or whether or not that needs to change with Pochettino being available and that he should be given the reins and maybe Solskjaer either leaves the club or moves into a different role in the club. I'm still supporting Solskjaer and I hope to God we can turn it and that I've, all, I've been wrong completely and then Pogba's absence has been the catalyst behind this terrible form all season long apart from good games here or there and that things will continue on the up in January after he makes a signing or two and that all of this will just be a, a bad nightmare but on the other hand where's the identity from Solskjaer's team where's the identity in the football for me it's obvious I think that the results themselves are not as important to United at the moment as they were previously under Mourinho who lost his job after not being as bad as Solskjaer, but Solskjaer's still in the job. It's confusing. I want to know where you stand on this. For me, this has just been me bumbling and mumbling on for a while now, but that's, I suppose, a situation that United have put me into. It's hard to see so many critics of Solskjaer, but I understand a lot of them. It's hard to completely justify why 
he still should be United manager, even if you think that is the case. But this is a process that has been going on for 18 months now. I don't see sacking Solskjaer and bringing in Pochettino as the magic sponge solution that some see it as. But at the same time, we can't just continue down this path if we get pumped by Spurs and pumped by City. You really could understand calls for Solskjaer to be replaced. I want to know where you stand on all of this. It's hard not to sound like a hypocrite in some of the stuff you, I say and some of the stuff you say and come out with, but it's just a tough time for United fans at the moment and playing Mourinho at Old Trafford couldn't really come at a worse time when you think about that and what he's going to do tactically against Solskjaer. But let me know where you stand on this. What's next for United and what's next for Solskjaer? Let me know in the comments. But it's a very, very tough time for United and a very tough time for Solskjaer. Let's see what happens next.